माननीय वित्त मंत्री श्रीमती निर्मला सीतारमन ऑनरेबल स्पीकर आई प्रेजेंट द बजट The Modi government is all set to present its 11th full budget on the 23rd of July. So what can people expect from budget 2024? A quick review of Modi government's past budgets may hold some clues. In its first ever budget, the Modi government aimed to cater all groups of the society with sabka saath sabka vikas pitch. The then finance minister Arun Jaitley laid down a broad policy indicator of the direction in which the government wishes to take the country. Many new schemes such as Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and Skill India were launched. While old schemes like Kisan Vikas Patra and Varishta Pension Bima Yojana were revived. But the highlight was the launch of the much famed Beti Bachao Beti Padhao Yojana and Smart Cities. As the fruits of development reach an increasingly large number of people, the pace of migration from rural areas to the cities is increasing. A new middle class is emerging which has aspirations of better living standards. Unless new cities are developed to accommodate the uh, burgeoning number of people through existing cities would become un unlivable. The Prime Minister has a vision of developing 100 smart cities as satellite towns of larger cities by modernizing the existing mid-sized cities. To provide the necessary focus to this critical activity, I have provided a sum of rupees 7,060 crores in the current fiscal. It is a shame that while the country has emerged as a major player amongst the emerging economies, the apathy towards the girl child is still quite rampant in these many parts of the country. Therefore, I propose to launch the Beti Bachao Bechi Padao Yojana, uh, uh, which will uh, be focused scheme, which will help in generating awareness and also improve the efficiency of the delivery welfare uh, services meant for women. I propose to set aside a sum of rupees 100 crores for this. In 2015, the focus was on growth, promoting entrepreneurship, manufacturing, rationalizing tax regime and providing some relief to the common man. To begin with, Jaitley proposed a reduction in corporate tax over four years from 30% to 25% with an aim to boost growth and investment. However, the showstopper was Jaitley's ambitious infrastructure outlay. Madam, this is no secret that the major slippage in the last decade has been on the infrastructure front. Our infrastructure does not match our growth ambitions. There is a pressing need to increase public investment. I have therefore increased outlays on both roads and gross budgetary support to the railways by 14,031 and rupees 10,050 crores respectively. I intend to establish a national investment and infrastructure fund which finds monies to ensure an annual flow of 20,000 crores to it. 20,000 is what the government will be giving. This will enable the trust to raise debt in terms invest as equity in infrastructure finance companies like the IRFC and the NH NHB. The infrastructure finance companies can then leverage this extra equity many folds. Thirdly, I also intend to permit tax-free infrastructure bonds for projects in rail, road and irrigation. Fourthly, PPP model of infrastructure development has to be revisited and revitalized. I intend to establish in Niti an Atal Innovation Mission. AIM will be an innovation promotion pr platform involving academics, entrepreneurs, researchers and draw upon national and international experiences to foster a culture of innovation, R&D and scientific research. The 2016 Union budget focused on Bharat, rural India and the agriculture sector. 
The budget aimed to boost rural prosperity and enhance farmer welfare, reflecting a shift towards strengthening the backbone of the Indian economy through targeted investments and reforms in these crucial areas. Let me first take up agriculture and farmers' welfare. We are grateful to our farmers for being the backbone of the country's food security. We need to think beyond food security and give back to our farmers a sense of income security. Government will therefore reorient its interventions in the farm and non-farm sector to double the income of farmers by 2022. Our total allocation on agriculture and farmers' welfare is Rs 35,984 crores. The 2017 Union Budget marked several significant firsts in India's budgetary history. It was the inaugural year where the Union and Railway budgets were merged. This pivotal budget also shifted the traditional presentation date to 1st February and introduced the Electoral Bonds Scheme. The Budget 2017-18 contains three major reforms. First, the presentation of the budget has been advanced to the 1st of February to enable the Parliament to avoid a vote on account and pass a single appropriation bill for 17-18 before the close of the current financial year. This would enable ministries and departments to operationalize all schemes projects including new schemes right from the commencement of the next financial year. They would be able to utilize the available working season before the onset of the monsoons. Second, the major the merger of the railway budget with the general budget is a historic step. We have discontinued the colonial practice prevalent since 1924. This decision brings railways to the center stage of the government's fiscal policy and would facilitate multimodal transport planning between the railways, highways and inland waterways. The functional autonomy of the railways will however continue. Third. We have done away with the plan and the non-plan classification of expenditure. This will give us a holistic view of allocation for sectors and ministries. This would facilitate optimal allocation of resources. The budget 2018 to 2019 focused on improving healthcare, agriculture and rural infrastructure. It introduced the Ayushman Bharat scheme, providing health coverage to millions. The minimum support price, MSP, for crops was raised to support farmers. Additionally, the budget emphasized rural electrification and launched the Operation Greens initiative to stabilize the supply and prices of tomatoes, onions and potatoes. We have taken up programs to direct the benefits of structural reforms and good growth to reach the farmers poor and other vulnerable sections of our society to uplift the underdeveloped regions. This year's budget will consolidate these gains and particularly focus on strengthening agriculture and rural economy, provision for good health to economically less privileged, taking care of senior citizens, infrastructure creation, and working with the states to provide more resources for improving the quality of education in the country. In 2019, the Modi government presented two budgets, one in February and another in July, as the country conducted Lok Sabha elections in April. Presented on 1st February, the 2019 interim budget was touted as a populist budget presented by Piyush Goyal, the then railway minister as opposed to finance minister Arun Jaitley due to health reasons. From increasing income support for farmers to appeasing the middle class taxpayers, Piyush Goyal's speech left almost all sections with a smile on their face. To provide an assured income support to the small and marginal farmers, chote aur siman jo kisan hai, उनको एक प्रकार से उनकी आय में और तेज गति से बढ़े और एक समर्थन देने के हेतु प्रधानमंत्री किसान सम्मान निधि पीएम किसान नाम की एक ऐतिहासिक योजना इस सरकार ने मंजूरी की है पीएम किसान इस योजना के तहत जो वल्नरेबल 
किसान हैं जो छोटी जमीन रखते हैं दो हेक्टेयर तक की जिनकी जमीन है दो हेक्टेयर तक की जमीन को उन सभी को सीधा उनके इनकम में सपोर्ट डायरेक्ट इनकम सपोर्ट छह हजार रुपए प्रति वर्ष के हिसाब से देने का निर्णय सरकार ने किया है beneficiary farmers in three equal installments of rupees 2000 each this program will be funded 100% by the government of india individual taxpayers having taxable annual income up to rupees 5 lakhs will get full tax rebate therefore will not be required to pay any tax as a result even, even persons having gross income up to rupees 6.5 lakhs may not be required to pay any income tax if they make investments in provident funds specified savings insurance etc 6.5 lakh tak jab aap ye investment karte ho to 6.5 lakh tak bhi koi tax nahi aayega agar aap investment karte ho specified savings additional deductions such as interest on home loan up to 2 lakhs interest on educational loans national pension scheme contributions medical insurance medical expenditure on senior citizens per, with all of these other exemptions deductions persons having even higher income will not have to pay any tax wow. After a landslide victory in general elections, the Modi government was back to present the full budget, but this time with a new face and a new look. In her maiden speech, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman walked into the parliament with a bahi khata, replacing the traditional red briefcase and presented the union budget with a 10-year vision of New India. The vision was centered around Make in India with an aim to boost domestic production. So in order to boost economic growth, and make in india the government will launch a scheme to invite global companies through a transparent competitive bidding to set up <coughs> mega manufacturing plants in sunrise and advanced technology areas such as semiconductor fabrication solar photo photovoltaic voltaic cells lithium storage batteries solar electric charging infrastructure computer servers laptops etc and provide them investment linked income tax exemptions under 35 ad of the income tax act and other indirect tax benefits nirmala sitaraman's second union budget speech was the longest budget speech in india's history from announcing multi billion dollar packages for farming infrastructure and healthcare to focusing on capacity building empowering marginalized sections and boosting income and purchasing power the budget aimed to address the country's economic situation however the showstopper of the 2020 budget was the introduction of the new tax regime which came with more tax slabs but cut down on exemptions currently the income tax act is riddled with various exemptions and deductions which make compliance by the taxpayer and administration of income tax act by the tax authorities a burdensome process it is almost impossible for a taxpayer to comply with income tax law without taking the help from professionals in order to provide significant relief to the individual taxpayers and to simplify the income tax law 
I propose to bring a new simplified personal income tax regime wherein income tax rates will be significantly reduced for the individual taxpayers who forego certain deductions and exemptions. As the country grappled with COVID-19, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman went paperless, replacing her bahi khata with a tablet for the budget presentation. The Union Budget 2021 focused on health, infrastructure and tax reforms with increased health care allocations and amendments in direct tax proposals. Key highlights included new schemes, an increased FDI limit in the insurance sector, relief for senior citizens and faceless tax proceedings. Even at the outset, I would like to say that the investment on health infrastructure in this budget has increased substantially. Progressively, as institutions absorb more, we shall commit more. Taking a holistic approach to health, we focus on strengthening three areas, preventive, curative and well-being. In the 2022 budget, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman laid out the PM Gati Shakti scheme, focusing on enhancing roads, railways, airports, ports, mass transport, waterways, and logistics infrastructure. The expansion of national highways was another key proposal. Another significant announcement was the introduction of a 30% tax on cryptocurrency capital gains aimed at curbing fraudulent transactions and bringing digital assets under regulation. There has been a phenomenal increase in transaction in virtual digital assets. The magnitude and frequency of these transactions have made it imperative to provide for a specific tax regime. Accordingly, for the taxation of virtual digital assets, I propose to provide that any income from transfer of any virtual digital asset shall be taxed at the rate of 30%, 30%. The Union Budget 2023-2024 to focused on enhancing capital expenditure with an allocation of 10 lakh rupees crore and emphasized infrastructure and rural development. Significant changes were made to the new income tax regime with earnings up to 7 lakh rupees now exempt from income tax. The budget aimed to foster green growth initiatives and promote sustainable development, reinforcing India's economic resilience and inclusive growth. Currently, those with income up to 5 lakh do not pay any tax, do not pay any income tax in both old and new regimes. I propose to increase the rebate limit to 7 lakh. The interim budget 2024 emphasized Viksit Bharat, envisioning a developed India by 2047. Key focus areas included infrastructure development, agricultural modernization, digital economy expansion, and healthcare improvements. Major allocations were made for rural development, youth employment, and clean energy projects. The budget aimed to accelerate economic growth, enhance social welfare, and ensure sustainable development across the nation. Our vision for Vikasit Bharat is that of prosperous Bharat in harmony with nature, with modern infrastructure, and providing opportunities for all citizens and all regions to reach their potential, with confidence arising from strong and exemplary track record of performance and progress, earning Sapka Vishwas the next five years will be years of unprecedented development and golden moments to realize the dream of developed India by 2047. The trinity of demography, democracy and diversity backed by Sabka Prayas has the potential to fulfill aspirations of every Indian.